that bike is a beast welcome back to m hood fishing everybody so this will be my second session today the first one was so horrible i just couldn't leave it at that i had plenty of energy after eating dinner we're back out here it is a little after 11 p.m we're on the river we're not at our spot though but we're close come on let's go it's actually a really nice night it's not hot it's not cold low 70s right now about 72 probably gonna see 70 degrees before i leave but later tonight like early tomorrow morning it's supposed to get down to 66 there's no wind might might have a little bit of a breeze later but no wind right now all right i'm off the levee coming down the dirt road to the spot it's looking good except for the rocks check it out guys i've been here before we're right by this dock and we're going to fish behind it it's kind of an l-shaped dock it goes along here and then the l part comes out right there so we're, we're pretty much behind it but we're down river from it we're on the down river side is what i mean and of course you should know because i'm probably titling the video as such we're looking for eel tonight eel love structure so we should be able to get into some now we're not going to be fishing deep water we're going to fish fairly shallow the tide is out right now but the river is up so i would say that we're probably going to be fishing in between five and ten feet of water right back here behind the dock and it is an active dock even though it's really old and looks kind of in disrepair but I've caught eel close to here before, and I expect that we will probably get into some eel tonight. Like I said, it's just after 11. I'm willing to stay for a while and see what we can do. Here's the one rod I brought. It's leaning up against my new beast. I love that bike, so awesome. So we're just gonna fish one rod on pretty light tackle. We have 20 pound mono as our main line, and then we're using 20 pound mono as our leader. And we got, I believe, that is a uh, two, I mean, I'm sorry, two aught kale. I'm gonna put a little piece of shrimp on that. This is gonna be a slip rig tonight. We're using one ounces of no roll because we're not gonna be facing a lot of current here. The bait that I'm gonna use tonight is shrimp. And now this shrimp is a little off. It's going off. It's been in the refrigerator since the last time I used it. And that is perfect for eel. The stinkier the shrimp, the faster they'll find it and it just works. It just doesn't work for your hands, does it? So generally we call shrimp that we buy from the grocery store or the market, the seafood market, market bait. Sometimes you can't always get the small ones. As you saw, these are jumbos. So we're pretty much just gonna cut that big one up and go through little pieces each time, hooking it different ways each time this time we went through it twice that's going to soften up when it's out there and it's going to work i like to use kales for eel because i can set the hook with these and i want to set the hook i want to get a lip hook i do not like it when i deep hook my eels especially if i'm going to catch and release well let's see what we can do tonight if we get a really nice size one we might take it home for the table otherwise we're we're going to let all the immature ones go. I'm not going to do a real long cast. I don't have that much water to fish here, but it's going to be about somewhere around 25 feet, real close to one of the pylons, but not right up on top of it. And we're just going to rock this out on a, a regular bank stick here. And we got the light on the rod tip. Make sure that is there and good and ready to go. Probably gonna get some bycatches of catfish and who knows what. I keep hearing something to the right. I think it's just water wrapping up against the beach, but it sounds kind of odd. It almost sounds like little hands unwrapping plastic cellophane somewhere over there. I just brought this in. I had the slightest, slightest little bite and I think it was a crab. Gonna go through a lot of shrimp as we sit here. 
This time I'm just going through this little piece, trying to get, get the hook through both sides of the shell. Let it hang off like that. I'm gonna throw back out there and feed that crab again. Well, we're not gonna throw out in the same spot. Look at this. Left-handed hook set. Ooh, feeling some head shakes right there. Yes, yes, oh. It just broke the water, but I'm not sure what we have yet. Well, it's not an eel. I'm sure you can make a big wild guess as to what we have here. Got us a nice looking gaff top with some really long whiskers. Yeah, you're right, you know where that's going. Not in my bait tote. Here you go, there's a nice good look at it. It's not very big, not even a pound probably. We'd make a nice half a sandwich, but not for me. Once again, another small piece of shrimp. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go through one side and out the other. So the hook is going through both sides of the shell. And we're gonna put that right back out there. Just did the cast and this time I got it right up on top of the structure. So we're really close. Hopefully we don't get a snag, but it's a really good place to be. Eel during the day will be inside that structure hiding somewhere and they'll come out at night they're low light feeders so we have a good chance of getting one even back here in the shallow water huh i'm being very observant as i do this because i don't have that much experience fishing this spot but i just did a much longer cast than any cast i've done this evening and i see that my line is reorientated a little bit to the right so it means i must be in stronger current obviously but I'm still not, I'm not moving any more than I have. Might up my lead to two ounces if I want to keep that bait right where it, right where I'm putting it or closer. But for the moment, we're just gonna, we're just gonna ride this particular cast out, see what we can get. Left-handed, left-handed hook set. Oh. This is, uh, this is like pulling in. Oh, there's, there's a head shake. Man, it felt like I was pulling in a wet sleeping bag for a second. This is definitely bigger than that first fish. Nice head shakes right here. They always feel bigger than they are when you're fishing lighter gear. I'm not fishing around a really steep drop off like some of the places I fish. This has got a lot of downward pull, but head shakes. So I'm not going to jump the gun here and say stingray, but we'll see once we get this in. I, I have my fish on the surface. I just can't see it yet. It's not a stingray. It might not be a gaff top either. Oh, I got myself a little flatty. Yeah, you're right. I did bring the cast net. Oh, yes, I did bring the cast net, but that's not what I was trying to say. I brought the landing net, but I did not bring the shoes that I like to get wet. I brought the shoes that I don't like to get wet. So oh, there we go. Out looking for eel getting other cool things in the process yes about maybe four or five pounds let's get them up and have a good look really decent hook set right in the corner of the mouth i am trying to avoid deep hooks tonight i do not like that yeah definitely five six pounds something like that really nice really awesome what else is down there okay one saltwater cat one freshwater cat i like this trend where's our eel mr flatty go call him up <laughs> i actually was going to do this real graceful release and he is like no let me go
obviously I brought the wrong shoes, so we're gonna have to huck fin it. Here we go, huck finning it. I'm just glad that we're not fishing on Dead Horse Beach. You ever seen that place? <laughs> you would never want to go barefoot there, trust me. Oh, 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 yes. Another left-handed strike. Number three coming in. Oh, no, never mind. Look at it. There we go. Nope. That was two misses in a row. Unacceptable. <laughs> I'm, I'm just happy that I'm getting a lot of action. Earlier session I went on was very poor. There we go. Another good left-handed strike. This one is staying on. Ooh, this feels really good right now. This is pretty much a barge bite. The barge has not been past us for very long but the wake is gone. Just please stay on. I can't tell you what we have right now. It isn't feeling decent though. Ooh, there's a little bit of a head shake right there. Maybe it's a cat. A little bit of a fight right here. It's coming up, it's on the surface. Oh, ho, ho. look what we got. Not only is it an unagi, but look at the size of that. Wow. I haven't been getting them at, at that size for a while. They've just been medium size. This is a decent size. Decent size. I've got them bigger before. I was watching a video the other day about this eel fisherman in the UK, and he was showing off a 10 pound eel pretty much sim same species these all including the one that the one he showed off and the other ones he was catching they all get born out in the sargoza sea i'm not going to keep this one actually so we are going to unhook him right in the water we got a nice lip hook So they get born out there and then they they make their way as what we call glass eels, little fry, little baby eels. They make their way up into these freshwater rivers of North America and the UK and some other places in Europe where they live out their adult lives. And then when they're ready to go do the deed, ready to go spawn, whoops, they go back out to the Sargosa Sea there he goes. He's maybe a bit over a pound, pushing pound and a half, maybe two. Not bad for about two hours in shallow water. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.